five martial arts class you're gonna learn bow staff at home for beginners this is number four in this series grab your staff it should be in the middle of your hand you're just gonna turn it out from side to side this is how you strengthen the wrists from the start it's also gonna get the blood flowing it's gonna lubricate the joint it's gonna keep you safe from workout or from injury during this workout to be safe from injury by doing a simple motion while you're building strength speed power coordination, all the things that you need to be a great martial artist and to be able to use your staff, whether it's the long martial arts staff like the bow or the jangbong or the short martial arts staff like a hanbo somewhere in the middle is the joe. So you can just turn this out side to side, 30 seconds, put it in the other hand and then do the same thing. Just going side to side, up and out, one hand first then the other one. This is also going to start to strengthen everything in the hand, in the forearm, all the way up and in, into your shoulder. Plus, when you do it standing, your stomach up and in, you're gonna be doing a strengthening exercise for your core muscles. So your posture is gonna improve. Overall, you're gonna get stronger. 30 seconds here, pinky to pinky, palms up, turning out and out. Second warm up motion. In this fourth workout, learn bow staff at home for beginners, is transfer, passing the staff from one hand to the other. When you start to do this kind of a workout, you want to learn the most that you can in the shortest amount of time, and then have plenty of time to practice each move. That's how you're going to get faster, better. You're going to get stronger, better. You're going to get faster, better with all of these simple, basic warm-ups. And then you're also going to learn the complex stuff, but it's not going to be so hard for you. And it's not that it got easy. You're just going to get better faster. So 30 seconds side to side, and then put it in your right hand. Put your right foot in front of the left. And you're going to make this circle on this side and a circle on this side. So that sideways figure eight, turning stomach up and in. Make sure this hand is up guarding your head. You will hit yourself, probably in the knee or the elbow. Sometimes you're gonna hit yourself in the head. It's not gonna kill you, but you're gonna feel it. So be prepared for that. Don't let it be a reason to stop. It's just part of the learning process. Not everything can be completely pain-free, martial arts especially, it has a learning price. The price that you pay to learn something new is sometimes a lump on your head. Do this for 30 seconds, bring it into the other hand the same way, pinky to pinky, palms up, put that foot in front, coming from one side to the other, hand up, guard your head from yourself. You're guarding your head from yourself, but it's a good habit to get into. So when you're defending yourself later, you're aware of this. Don't let them turn your operating system off. Don't let them knock you out. Always guard your head. Stomach up and in, abs tight. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. This is fast enough at the beginning. And gradually, as you get stronger, more flexible, you start to get that small turn in the shoulders and the hips, with the stomach up and in and the chin back, it's naturally gonna go faster for you. After you've done that for 30 seconds, you're gonna go back into the first hand, pinkies together, and then you're gonna switch with every rotation Around your body, you go into the other hand. Start to add that small step to the front, to the back. Just a couple steps. Your heart rate is going to get up faster. You're going to start to break a sweat. You start to get stronger faster. Everything's improving. You add these little steps. You're forcing your stomach to squeeze, which improves your core strength, improving your posture. Mostly, it's going to make you stronger and faster, better able to defend yourself, whether it's with a weapon or without. Do that for 30 seconds, and then go back into the right hand, and you're going to reverse that spin. This is the sideways figure eight, also known as the infinity spin or the endless spin. And all you're doing now is you're just pulling with the bottom side of your hand, pulling it up. Pulling it up, right foot forward, left hand up, stomach up and in, abs tight, 
slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Gradually squeezing more here. Make sure your chin is back, hand guarding the head, and speed it up. Bring it into the other hand. Now you're going to reach across your body, and you're the same way. You're taking the same way, pinky to pinky. But before, when you were going forward, when you change hands, it's the opposite side, and you're grabbing behind your front hand. Now that you're doing the reverse spin, you're going to reach in front of your body and grab in front of the staff. In front of the staff, just like that. We'll put it in that left hand slowly, the right hand up, that reverse spin. I want you to see something else too in this fourth workout. I can do the spin down here. So you can do it here, you can do it here in the middle, you can do it even higher, and all of them are correct. They're just different places. And, and if you want to progress your workout, you want to get better faster, once you've learned the basics, mix it up a little bit. Do some of them here, do some of them here, and then do the rest here, or move up and down during the entire 30 seconds that you're spinning. Bring it across the body. This is my right hand coming to the left side, and now changing from one hand to the other hand, adding that little step. This is the reverse spin. Make sure you're in the reverse. You can check yourself like this. Go back to the forward. This is the easier one. And then reverse it. Make sure you are reversing. It's so easy to trick yourself. You think you're doing it in reverse, and you're really doing it to the front. Keep running into this bag behind me. Get it out of the way a little bit. There we go. Small steps. It's either move the bag or break the camera again. <laughs> I'm running out of um, the camera holders. I keep breaking the tripods where I break the thing that holds the phone. I like to stop doing that. All right, that's 30 seconds there. We're not done with that figure eight spin. We're doing that a lot in this fourth workout. I'm now going to put it in my right hand, and I'm going to put my right hand just to the side. Looks like that. I'm going to do front and back, front and back. So from here, you are here, go to the side. In this case, your feet are just under your body. You don't have one foot in front of the other. You're going to bring it to the front of your face and behind your head. It goes to the front and the back. And now what's going to happen is your shoulder is going to start to really get strong in the, um, right here in the deltoids, right? You have the front, you have the side, and you have the back. And they have names like anterior, uh, medial, and posterior. But you're going to especially start to work this medial, this side head, and the back. When we go up over the head, you start to really do a lot of things for the back of the shoulder. So this bow is going to make you really strong all the way through every range of motion that you need to defend yourself, to fight in for self-defense, because your shoulder is going to get wicked strong in these different positions. But this fourth workout, bow staff at home, we're going to the side. With that forward spin, 30 seconds, bring it into the other hand, same thing. Notice your hands up. To the front, and to the back, 30 seconds. And you're gonna feel, this feels completely different than when you do it in front of your body. So this and this are the same, but they feel very different. It's a different plane, but it's great, like I said, you're going to build great strength, speed, power, balance, and your shoulders go back into the first hand and reverse the spin, pulling it up and out and away from you, just to the front and to the back. And just like the other one, if you want to, do a lot of them down here, do some of them in the middle, and do some of them up here, and feel how that uh, changes, how, where you feel it in your shoulder. The only thing that's going to happen is you're going to get really strong. Your strikes are going to get stronger. If you do grappling martial arts like a jiu-jitsu or judo, western wrestling, you're going to get greater grappling power in your shoulders and in your grip. So you're just going to the side, to the front, and to the back. And now with your hand in front, wrist roll to a wrist roll. This is a skill we did in the last two lessons. Lesson two and three in this series. So I'm going to show you just a little bit, but if you need to review, 
Go back to those, uh, the other ones. You're just turning your thumb up, open. Let it balance in the back of your hand. The momentum or the weight of the staff will bring it around. Go slow at first. You're going to want to move fast on a lot of these. Fight that. You're going to fight to stay in it, right? Fight to grow. Fight to learn something new. Fight to move up to a new level. And here's where you can see the purpose of my red tape being in the center of the staff. If you were to spin in the same direction, you're going to end up like that. And you ask me this all the time. What happens? You get to here, it falls to the ground. You need to be constantly going back to the center of your staff on a lot of these spins. And the way that you do that, see how that's there? How far away that is? You simply, at the end of the motion, soften your grip, let it slide back in. So from here, as you're turning, your hand is sliding back to the center. If not, you end up, again, long side, short side. Eventually it'll fall. So the way you fix it, put a piece of tape on your staff, and as you come around, make it a habit of sliding back. Here it comes to the center. See how my hand slides? I'm going to try to slow it down without dropping it. And it's okay to drop it. Just pick it up. But that's it. Put that uh, tape there, slow it down enough, and see if you can't get your hand back after or during the spin here. But you need this wrist roll. Wrist roll to wrist roll. Put in the other hand, going one way, going back the other way. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Take your time, build the skill, and fight to grow. I was talking to my kids this morning on the way to school. One of them said, Dad, I hear you say fight to grow all the time. What does that mean? He's six, smart, he's paying attention. I said, you know how everybody tries to find a reason why they can't do something? I'm too tired, I'm too old, I'm too young. I had this injury, I have that injury, I have this limitation. Uh, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough time, it's too hot, it's too cold. They find a reason, they fight for a reason to quit and to give up. But fighting to grow, fighting to win, fighting to stay in it means find one reason. I like to do it and, make, and then hold on to that, fight for that. Fight for finding a reason why you should keep going and push out all those thoughts of why you can't. You, don't, you can find a million reasons why something can't be done. You only need one, by the way. So that's a waste of energy. Or train your mind, find all the reasons why you can, why you won't quit, why you won't give up. And then just keep fighting, stay in the fight. One step in front of the other one. We were talking about climbing mountains this morning. We're watching a little documentary about K2. And they said, Dad, did you ever climb a mountain? I said, yeah, a couple. What was it like? It was cold, it was hard. And I said, you gotta fight to grow. That's how we, are, we started that conversation. It's the same thing. Your heart feels like it's gonna explode. Your legs feel like they're broken. Your brain's telling you, stop, go back. And you're like, nah, I wanna get to the top. I wanna see what's up there. And it's worth it. Trust me, it's worth it. All right, so you did that. Go back into figure eight spinning. And now I want you to step forward and then turn around backward. And when you turn around backward, it's gonna change the position of your spin or change the direction of your spin. Watch what I mean. I'm gonna show this is the front now. So I'm in a forward spin. I turn and by turning, it simply goes into the reverse. Then I turn back around, it goes back forward. So I want you to take a couple steps, change directions, take a couple steps, change directions and get a feel for how this spin changes simply by turning your body. Add this to this workout, number four today. So you're just going forward, a couple steps, turn around, a couple steps, forward a couple steps, and then bring it into the right hand. From the right hand, you're going behind the back and you're taking it out to the other side. Let me show you what it looks like from behind. Right hand. This hand's under it, comes out. Bring it back, this hand goes under, bring it back out. That's all this is. Start, let me show you why this is so valuable. Remember I talked about the shoulders and strength? This is about mobility and flexibility. From here to go behind the back, 
See how much I have to pull my hand behind me? And you're gonna get really extremely strong and flexible and mobile. You're gonna get great mobility, great uh, range of motion in your shoulders from going behind the back and bringing it out. So go behind the back. This is also where you're gonna smack yourself in the back of the leg. You're either gonna get your calf, you have big chunky calves like I've got. That's from climbing ladders as a kid, by the way. I've been working since I was a little kid. My dad would give me a bucket of paint and a big ladder. So you take that ladder around back and paint the soffit. Or paint the downspouts or whatever it was. I spend most of my summer up on a ladder. No complaints. Enjoying every second of it. So it goes out and then you go up over your head and bring it out. Behind the back, up, over the head. Now look what I'm doing over the head. I'm going to try to squat so you can see it. I'm turning my palm away from me or facing my face. And then my other hand just takes it. This is the same way we warmed up. It's exact same motion. You, in fact, if you want, practice this first before you go overhead and behind the back. The key are that your elbows must be straight. When you hit yourself in the head, it's almost always because you're, try you're trying to go like this. Your elbows are bent and it has to run into your head. Get your arms straight. You hit yourself in the head, you've either bent your elbow or while you're coming down to go behind your back, you can see that, you're spinning too much and you're whacking yourself in the head. So you're gonna fix that. Practice this, side to side. Then go back behind your back. You gotta stand up so I can not hit the floor. But from overhead to here, don't spin it. Spin it behind your back. Stop spinning. Simply lift. Spin it overhead. Stop spinning. Spin behind the back. Straight up. Straight down. Up. Down. And up and down. You shouldn't be going up and down with your legs. I'm just doing that for the camera because it's a little low this morning. All right. Final exercise in this series. These are all spins today. Finger rolls. And I want you to do a continuous finger roll and a three-finger finger roll. And I know we talked about this last workout. If, if you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, you can go back there. Number three, look for the same title, number three. Or go to my website, pasquinelli.com and you'll find all these workouts there. After I get them done, I upload them. If you can't find what you're looking for or you wanna see something else, go to that pasquinelli.com, send me an email or send me that in that contact box on the bottom on the right side of the page. It says, contact me. I love to hear what you're thinking. This is a conversation, by the way, too. I just, I'm talking to you and I don't always see your chat questions. I always do try to come back and read your comments. We'll put it there. But if you want to send me faster, you want a faster response, go to my email or go to my uh, website, pascalone.com. Click on a couple ads while you're there if there happen to be one, if you're interested. That's how I keep the lights on. But then go to that contact box and ask me, make a request. Hey, I'd like to do this. Or I saw somebody do that and I didn't understand it. Or why do you do this? Or have you thought about doing that? Or if you just want to tell me that I'm wrong, some people like to do that. That's good. I, I'm never opposed to hearing it. it. Makes me think. Tell me that. All right. Especially if it's saying you said bow staff, and that means staff staff. That's not right. I'll give you my response. I'll tell you why I do that. I'll tell you right now. It's because people type in bow staff and they're looking for it. And if I just write wrote Bo, you might get like uh, some guy named Bo doing something. I don't know. You're not going to find what you're looking for. So I titled them so you can find them and we can work out together. So I just did these continuous spins. It's just simply going down and go, uh, back up, down and back up. The way you start is by turning your hand down. You're going to pull these three fingers out of the way. And then you just keep it going like that. And if you want, if this is helpful at first, Use your other hand to keep it moving, keep it from hitting the ground. 
Use this other hand if you need to. And then after a while, get it out of the way. Then the three, the, yeah, three finger rule. I'm gonna go down until I get to the ring finger and the pinky finger, the last two fingers. And then I'm gonna put the three, the first three fingers together. And I'm gonna pull my thumb in there to assist the turn, keep it from hitting the ground. And I'm gonna pull it around the three fingers back into my grip, into my regular hand position. So you go one, two, three, three fingers together, thumb assists, regular hand position. The reason that you need to have, the reason that you do this is to extend the arm. These are, this works the extensors in your forearm so that your hand, you don't get tendonitis in your elbow. That's, that's why I have you do this. It's cool to look at, but it's more important than that. This is for a healthy, strong grip, especially when you're doing this kind of weapon. The reason you do the three fingers is when you start to do freestyle, you start spinning around your back and you're, you're flipping it over and you're doing, you're going to add a three finger roll right there or wherever because it's freestyle, right? It's bow flow or you're spinning here and you're turning around the back and you want to change positions, you go one, two, three, and then you're into this hand position again. So the purpose of this, it's a transition move, but it, that's what it is. It's three fingers, you go first, second, third, pinky finger and ring finger, it rolls of the back of your fingers, just like a wrist roll, there's the balance, the thumb gets in there and takes it. Now you can do this continuously. So you can go to here and then just keep it going and keep it going. Or and what I want you to try is go into your figure eight and do wrist roll to a wrist roll and then add a finger roll to a wrist roll, wrist roll, wrist roll, finger roll, wrist roll, wrist roll. So you're practicing wrist rolls and then every three or four throw in that finger roll. And the coolest thing about this stuff is you can do it in the reverse. So in a reverse spin, you can do the wrist roll, wrist roll. It just happens on the opposite side, wrist roll, and then finger roll. So even in the reverse spin, you can be doing wrist rolls and finger rolls. And so the finger roll just breaks up the speed and it, it makes it more dynamic. When you start to do this, whether it's for yourself, for fun, because you want to challenge yourself to grow, or if you're given a demonstration or you're creating a creative form for competition or whatever. Final word about spinning, because we did all spinning this workout. We didn't do blocks. We didn't do strikes. We didn't do the self-defense stuff that I also love. People say all the time, why would you spin? It's so, uh, you'd never use that in a fight. That's the argument. And they're right, for the most part. But the purpose of the spin, and this is for you to understand so that you can get past that silly argument. It's like a boxer jumping rope. So think of it, if you were uh, in the UFC, you're, you have to fight Conor McGregor, and you're getting ready. I don't know if he's still fighting, retired, or whatever. But you gotta fight one of those guys, or girls, and you pick up a jump rope while you're at your training camp to work on conditioning your heart, your lungs, your legs, and you, you do all the fancy footwork, and you do the tricks, and you go, you spin, and you go back and forth, right? All the fun things that we like to do with a jump rope as martial artists or fighters, it's not, and you don't take that in the ring. You don't get to up to Conor McGregor and whip out your, that you might, you might win better that way, but you're not fighting with the rope, that's my point. You're not necessarily fighting with any of these fancy uh, finger rolls or wrist rolls or over the head, behind the back, you're not fighting with that. It's conditioning your body so you become a better fighter when you go back to this position, right? When you go back to these strikes and this block and then the hand position change. That's why you do all the spins, it's condition your body. Or do it for fun, I do it for both. I do it mostly because it's fun for me. It's like a moving meditation. It helps me get focused and centered, especially on days when I have a lot of stress. Spinning for about five minutes vigorously and starting to go through these fun, twisting, spinning, hand position, changing motions, and going really fast and drop it, pick it up and do it again. That's fun for me. So if that's fun for you, do it for that reason. But either way, understand it's great for cross training. I'll see you guys in the very next one. Thank you.